Hello and good morning. My name is John Bali and welcome back for episode 6 of the map experience and mods in action let's play here in South Brazil, the South Brazilian map by Eric Isaac Agro Mods. Yeah, you, you just saw it in the little flashback. Um, yesterday I bought a new cedar, um, this Wetterstedt over here. Uh, I think six six meter cedar. Uh, where is it? There. Yes, six meter cedar. So I got rid of the four meter um, wide um, coon cedar. Um, I had the money from the cotton sale um, to do so. So now I'm just yeah, getting bigger and hoping to seed my um, fields much faster what i also did was selling my oats um i sold the um 13871 liters of oats of oats which were in my silo um for 12109 dollars um yeah one thing yesterday we also bought our tatra phoenix agro truck um still a nice one and only today um dropped a new mod um, for another South Brazilian truck, uh, a cab over, which would fit so much, <laughs> so nice, uh, so much better. But anyway, now we have the Phoenix. Um, so today, what are we going today? Just a quick look. As you can see, our two fields here are ready to harvest. They are planted with sorghum here and corn here. And we wanted to compare um, the silage yield for these two crop types, especially for the sorghum, in comparison to the um, corn, which is standard crop in the game, and the sorghum right here, which is a custom crop to this map. So this is our ready to harvest uh, sorghum. And over here we have our ready to harvest corn. Um, so, what are we going to deal with today? Well, with these um, silage um, harvesters, small silage harvesters to be put on the side of your tractor and not um, the big ones um, um, like the yeah the forage harvesters like the Krone Big X, Big, Big X 1180, um, which is something we can definitely not afford, not even to lease. Uh, leasing cost would be over 26,000 euros and it's only for the vehicle, not the header. So what do we have here? At first we have um, the Pöttinger. This is the Pöttinger Max 5. This is a forage header um, for yeah, attaching it to the front of your tractor, just like here. So with the PTO connecting it and operating it. Um, this is, uh, I leased all the equipment from Gonzales this morning. Um, this is 38,000 euros to buy, 2.2 meters um, width. Um, so we're talking about 17,271 euros per meter. This is a front mower, as you can probably tell. Um, next up, we have, oh yeah, this is a um, standard in-game. Uh, equipment you get this standard with the game next up we have this um, nice um, John Deere um, forage harvester um, this is the John Deere 3765 by Pepe 978 um, there is it um, this is a 4 point, uh, 2.4 meter um, forage harvester um, which is 20 8,900 to buy and um, yeah this will end up with 12,041 euros per meter. Um, this is a trailed run so you trail it behind your tractor um, like it's shown here and here we have a attachment for a trailer. Um, the trailer which I used here is the standard in-game um, Kröger Agroliner HKD 302. 
because it has a um, pin hitch connection. And um, the last one is this one um, over here, which we attach to our Massey Ferguson. This is the Vicon MH90S Twin by White Bull Modding. Um, this is a rear side mower, um, two meters wide, and it's only 7,500 7, euros um, to buy, so only 300. Uh, 3750 euros per meter and I would say let's just um, get it started with the um, Pertininger first uh, no, I just... so you see I already uh, well, I also attached um, a rear weight to my tractor um, yeah to balance this uh, device here because well it's a pretty heavy um, piece of equipment um, to work with so unfolding pipe and so this shall um, work like this oh, yeah. so switching it on lowering it down so it's um, this putting at 2.2 meters And there you go, the way it looks, it's getting its 2.2 meters of width pretty easily. So I'm not running over my crops, I have crop destruction on, so if I would drive over um, the actual crop, I would destroy it. Um, so. And now uh, we are at the end of our field. And shut it off, lift it up. So um, our um, Pöttinger just um, gave us 3,779 liters of silage. Um, I will connect the next one and bring you guys back in in a second. Welcome back. So now we are going to try um, the uh, John Deere one. Um, so getting a little bit trickier. Uh, first you need to unfold the header, yeah. Unfold it, okay. So it swings out to the side like this, which is quite nice. You get a quite a wide distance um, to your um, crops so that you don't destroy it. Put it on, we need to lower it, we are lowering it, and no. Pipe it out. Why does it not work? Maybe because it does not say corn, grass, chef. Silage. This self prepared harvester collects grass straw or hair. Collects. This machine. Uh, <laughs> oh, great, John. You should have really read the manual. The manual. So this is just a collector and not a harvester. Okay. Mm. Yeah, great. So also, it's not cutting anything here. So it's supposed to collect material on. Um, uh, from the ground maybe I mean I will definitely find some use for it um, later on um, when I want to collect the um, um, the silage um, from my bunker silo later on 
but apparently right now um, I cannot use it as I had intended to. Okay, well, I guess every day is a learning day and this teaches us the very important lesson that um, if you really want to make something right and don't waste money, um, you should always read the manual. Um, because if I would have paid attention to it, what this thing can do, um, I would have realized <laughs> by now that, um, yeah, it's not a cutter, it's only a collecting device. So, yeah, <laughs> great job. And you all witnessed um, my stupidity um, with this. So, congratulations. Okay. So next up, we will take a look at this Vicon um, side mower, side cutter. So I already unfolded it, switch it on, lower it down. Okay, hopefully it will work and put it into the trailer, quite a high trailer. Doesn't look like that. Um, bear with me one second. So, I'm back. I just brought my um, semi-trailer, hoping it will work, because I believe it's not that as high as the... Or I believe it's not as high as the other um, trailer is, but it appears like... Um, it is and I mean you can see the pipe following with the trailer but for a reason which is currently unknown to me um well it does not discharge its contents. Um okay so I have only one option left. Um see you in a second. Hello, welcome back. Um so I leased another trailer, the Fortrip HW80, um, and as you can see, it already has 49 liters in it. Um, it worked, um, so um, you need to have a very low trailer with the Vicon because, um, yeah, of the um, very short pipe. So I just made another two rows with the um, Pertinger. Um, just to get it uh, a straight start again to so that we can compare these both forage harvesters um, Yeah, how they cut and now we can Go and you can see well, it basically takes two rows and Why Does it not discharge I thought when it starts discharging into the the this is so strange. Hold it and fold it. Okay. Huh. Well, I thought after discharging a little bit into the trailer, it should do it. But it on. Hmm. Okay. Um. I guess. Uh, I cannot get it to work, unfortunately. Okay. It's a little bit three liters more into the trailer. That's a pity. I mean, now I already lost um, something of my sorghum harvest um, to the to that harvester here, and yeah, hmm, okay. Um, so, the only option I have 
right now is um, continuing my sorghum um, harvest with the Pöttinger. Yeah, I'm so excited. Um, and when the sorghum field is done, I think I will bring you guys back in. And this is pretty shame. I, I mean, we only have this um, Pöttinger in the game, and now with me not paying attention to the John Deere one, um, I'm not so sure. Maybe I should check through the mod hub again. But basically, these were the two things I found, which I thought were quite nice, quite, fit, quite fitting, and. As the um, attention-paying audience of you might have already noticed, I uh, disassembled the twin wheels um, from from this tractor because my originally original idea was um, use this tractor with the Pöttinger in front and the um, Wicon on the side. And then, um, yeah, use both at the same time to get a, a, a wider, wider spread and harvest as much as possible, as fast as possible. But it seems now, with the Vicon not really working like I think it should. Let me put it like that. I'm, I don't want to, to. Uh, blame or put it down on the on the mod maker not at all it's not my attention I'm just saying I cannot get it to work my fault my fault um, so um, don't want to uh, finger point at someone and say well you did not do this um, right so yeah okay um, long story short I will continue my sorghum harvest or maybe what we can do now I mean this trailer is all, almost full I mean it will definitely be filled um, during this uh, collection and then I can I will put the um, material onto the ground and then use the John Deere to collect it and put it into my um, um, semi trailer so maybe it will then because now it's chef definitely it's chef now um, then I can at least um, get the um, John Deere uh, to operate in this manner and um, at least can show you and show it to you in action um, that way around so I think I will do that I mean I'm just making these short lines here um, because the end of the field is very close um, to my fence, that's why I'm just making one, two or three rows here, and then I will go up the hill, um, taking the long routes again, um, or the long lanes again, um, to finish um, this uh, sorghum silaging. Correct. So. Um, I see you in a minute. Hello, welcome back. So now I just um, um, not finished, but almost filled one of the uh, Kolga Aqualine trailer, and now I can show you this um, video here. It's Oh, I did not lower it down. Okay, now, please, please work. Something needs to work right now. Yes, this looks pretty good. And now, we're looking at that. Yeah. Yes, now we're talking. So, that's um, how it's supposed to work. Um, actually, I just took a little look into uh, the mod hub and for the John Deere 3765, uh, which I have right here, it says Trail Forage Harvester John Deere 3700 
65 working with music horsepower. Um, so it's actually really described as a forage harvester in the motor. So maybe that's the reason for my um, misinterpretation of the usage of this um, um, vehicle trailer. Um, but actually it's really just something to uh, where you can collect your forage um, from the ground with this like and doing it here right now and this works absolutely perfect so that's what the um, John Deere um, what was it uh, 3765 by Pepe 978 is designed for and useful so but um maybe the one the people who are paying close attention um already noticed it my money went down significantly why did it do did it do that well because of this one here this is the Pöttinger max 6 um this here Pöttinger Max 5 for front attachment. This Pöttinger Max 6, a trailed forage harvester, just like what I thought the Valtra, um, yeah, would be. So now we will give this beauty a try. Um, this is 41,900 euros to buy, two meters um, working width. So. 20,950 euros per meter um, so more expensive than um, yeah the one for the front end of the tractor and now this is what I wanted to see works perfectly cuts the sorghum makes it into chaff this is what I thought the and here would uh, look like um, but yeah this is um, this is a mod by um, I think it's also by Pepe 789 uh, let me check this for a second yes it is this is a forage harvester um, Taut Pöttinger Max Six. This is how it's described in the mod tab, and it's by Pepe978 as well. So just like the um, John Deere ones, but the difference is well, the John Deere is for collection, your for collecting your um, forage crops, and this one is an actual harvester or cutter. Um, the way I see it, it. Um, made less um, silage although or um, less chaff although I thought um, or I believe I just ran over a little bit of uh, material um, so I wouldn't uh, count 100% on that and now we are doing what I intended to do with the Vicon the Vicon by the way is already back at the shop um, I returned it and well got that um, new Pöttinger. So now we are trying to make this a quick run and just see how these two work together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Appears front one won't fill the trailer <laughs> when the <laughs> rear one um, does as well so <laughs> using more chat here yeah, yeah, um, uh, this is I, I cannot back up right now um, maybe also due to the fact that um, the horsepower requirement for the front one is 150 and for the rear one it's 100 40, I think 
Yes, 140. So uh, 290 horsepower, but my tractor only has 210, 220, I think. So it does not work perfectly. Uh, maybe also the distance is now too far. And I don't know. Let's see if it loads into here. Not really. Okay then. Um, so yeah, this is our <laughs> mods in action. Um, let's play. Um, so what have we learned today? Um, the Vicon um, did not work for me. I did, couldn't get it to work. Once again, I'm not saying that it does not work at all. Uh, I'm just saying I could not get it to work. Um, the John Deere um, is not a forage harvester. It's just a forage collector. I mean, what, what's uh, not just, but it's a forage collector, not a forage harvester. And the uh, putting up Max 6, which we have here right now, is working pretty well by its own. Um, I mean, if you I really wish I could have uh, connected it with the front mower to get a 4 meter um, forage harvester, uh, if you would like to call it like that, but apparently this does not work in the way I thought it would. So yeah, just like the fact that the uh, John Deere is not a forage harvester, just a forage collector. Um, I say every day is a, work, uh, is a learning day, a working day maybe as well, but a learning day. Every day is a learning day and I have learned something today uh, definitely and what I've learned is um, that yeah, the John Deere is not a forage harvester, <laughs> it's only this Pertinger right here. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Um, this is my um, evaluation for the forage harvesters in or the, yeah, the forage attachers, tractor attachers um, in, uh, in the game. Um, yeah, so that's what I can tell you about these. I mean, I told you um, the price performance ratio, I showed you how these operate or at least how they these are supposed to operate, how much I could them, like how much I could get them to work. Um, I hope um, the amount of sorghum, which is now being um, cut down to chaff uh, or chopped to chaff, um, will still be. Uh, I mean, if it in the end, if the sorghum gets uh, or will. The, uh, the, the sorghum harvest will be more than the corn harvest. I mean, we can um, surely assume that the sorghum creates um, more chaff than the corn because, well, I probably ran over a lot of um, um, sorghum as well as um, probably lost a little, uh, a little thing lost. Uh, couple of liters uh, to the uh, 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 harvesters which I couldn't get to work and so yeah um, I mean that's what we definitely can say uh, I mean if it turns out like that that the sorghum will give us more chat than the uh, corn this will be our conclusion if it's the other way around and the corn will give us more chaff than the sorghum, um, well, I think it will be hard to compare. But, um, well, that's life. That is how things turn out uh, sometimes. And if, these, if it doesn't work 100% uh, uh, um, or properly, then you basically have to live with what you get. Um, yeah, so I will finish this here. I mean, once this um, 
trailer is um, filled again, I will definitely spill the cargo back on the ground and collect it with the John Deere to fill my um, large, uh, my larger um, tractor trailer. Um, simply for the reason that um, this one will be easier to back up into my bunker silo. Um, I mean, the bunker silo here is the <laughs> hole in the ground, if you want to call it like that, um, where I stored the um, silage bales in a previous episode. Um, so, yeah, um, I mean, it will be much easier to back in there with um, the semi trailer than with the trailer I have attached to that harvester right here. So, yeah. That's, I think, that's it for the moment. I think it's already 12, almost 12 o'clock, 11.59. Um, and I will see you as soon as I completed, I have completed harvesting this field. Here I will bring you back in then to talk about um, the uh, quantity of the harvest. And when that's done, I will harvest the corn um, and then we will see how much um, Jeff both crop types crop types uh, made for us so yeah that's um, what is about to happen in the meantime and I will bring you back in when it's done see you in a minute Hello, welcome back. Um, as you're just seeing, I am, well, I own minus 10, minus 11 dollars at the moment. Um, I spend my money um, on seed um, and the money is decreasing at the moment because um, a worker is um, seeding wheat at, uh, uh, at, on my field number uh, 61 at the moment and of course we want to get paid so um, so yeah I'm um, a little bit pushed for success right here so I just filled the last bit of sorghum chaff into my trailer it's now filled with 33,095 liters of chaff Sorghum chaff, and this is the second load of chaff which we will now put into our bunker silo, and then we have the total amount um, of chaff which uh, we made out of our sorghum harvest. Um, well, depending on <laughs> the inconsistency of me driving over parts of it and ruin it with um, yeah the um, harvesters I tried out maybe I should have started with the corn in the first place but um, cannot change this now anymore so here's already our first load of Jeff Wayne for us so unload here um, and what I realized well, unloading the first uh, load is, um, well, it is relatively slow to unload, um, which does make sense, actually, because, I mean, this trailer is not a tipper, and it doesn't have a push function like other trailers do. So, in real life, how would this trailer unload? Well, basically, um, there would be, I mean, if you open that uh, door, it... Um, will float out as far as I c it can and after that um, people need to push out the load uh, so they will walk into that trailer and push the content with uh, shovels or whatever out of the trailer and this will um, then yeah of course take some time and will not work as fast as trailers which do have a tip or a push function so the chef is unloaded 
and I think we will just use the truck to compact it. I think it's the heaviest vehicle I have, or maybe my harvesters are heavier, but no matter. Let's use it to compact this whole stuff a little bit. Oh no, don't get stuck! Don't get stuck! Don't! Come on! Yes! Um, so, how much do we have in here? Um, help window on. We do have 72,587 liters of chaff um, from our uh, sorghum harvest. Um, so, that's our uh, starting value. Um, I will now uh, start to harvest the uh, corn and I hope I will... Um, Mm, I, I hope I, it will not turn into a, another working hour for the harvesters because this would probably ruin me completely. I'm already at minus $116. But um, what needs to be done needs to be done. <laughs> and I will see you once um, the corn harvest is complete. So see you in a bit. Hello, welcome back. Um, good news. Um, a, I mean, I already four hundred seventy-eight uh, <laughs> dollars. Uh, uh, I have my, that that in my mind. I'm already at minus four hundred uh, eighty-seven, eighty-eight um, dollars um, in my bank account. Um, but there is a good news, um, a harvesting contract came up, Harvesting Field 17, Barley, and as you can see, already 2%. Um, so I hired another worker, Worker J, um, who is doing this, and Worker H is planting my wheat field or seeding my wheat field over there. So. Um, I could use my own equipment for that harvesting contract. It's what, what, what was it? Four thousand seven hundred ninety-one will be the payout. But I mean, I will get what um, additional outcome the harvest um, has will be um, my own profit. And just taking a look at my silos, I mean, barley is empty i still have 9492 liters of wheat and i'm now seeding wheat myself so i will definitely sell everything what's coming out of this barley harvesting contract um right away to make some money and i really need that money back so um this is the first load of um, chat from our cornfield um so yeah that's um where we are at the moment i will now put this into my trailer and um yeah continue my work um i mean it's already quarter to six in the afternoon um, I will continue my work completing my chef harvest checking uh, my corn and then we will see us hopefully when everything is done so the chefing is done the harvesting is done I mean for the harvest I mean I need to unload that trailer with chef probably pretty soon um, because I need it for the barley of the contract. Um, so I'm <laughs> a little bit running out of equipment at the moment. Hello, welcome back. It is 10 to 5 in the afternoon. Um, my two fields are harvested. And now while I'm pulling tr or trying to pull that trailer backwards into my bunker silo here to um, 
unload the last bit of chef from it. Um, I just thought I'd just quickly bring you back in. Um, as I said, both of these fields are harvested. My harvesting contract on field 17 is ongoing. And as you can see, my helper is doing some really weird shapes. Where are we at? 39%. Um, yeah, he's doing some really weird shapes um, based on the um, feed itself. It's so steep that he cannot um, get the harvester um, up or got uh, wasn't able to get the harvester up that field and he was and I tried it myself and the harvester got stuck while it was operating it simply did not have the power to um, um, yeah pull up or, or to drive up the field while it was harvesting so yeah um, bit tricky but I will do this um, during the rest of the day so now this is empty I will now um, grab my two additional weights put some weight on my tractor um, and compact my um, the silage and then I will bring you guys um, back in oh maybe you probably have already noticed it um, my money of course went down even further um, this is due to the fact that the uh, Pöttinger, Pöttinger um, as well as the trailer got another additional hour of um, working and so yeah I lost uh, I will some money was still um, booked off my account um, yeah, and that's why we are already at minus 3,220. So, that's just um, for your information. Um, I will bring you guys back in once uh, my bunker silo is completely compacted. And then we will take a look at the numbers. Hello, welcome back. So, you can see it in the menu over there. 140,476 liters of silage in our bunker silo um blanket silo yes sir fantastic so um 140,000 um, liters of silage in total um the sorghum silage if you recall it was um 72,587 liters. This brings up to a corn silage of 67,889 liters. So a little bit less. So basically, um, even though I <laughs> ruined a lot of the sorghum silage, um, it appears that um, the sorghum silage still is more uh, or has a higher yield um, than the corn silage um, so um, this will um, lead to the conclusion for me at least that I will definitely do another um, run of so only sorghum silage on my two fields on my two uh, fields 69 so uh, 69 and the additional field I built um, over here so these two fields I will definitely do another sorghum silage um, or another yeah let sorghum grow and do another silage um, with it um, because um, we have now 140,000 liters in our bunker silo um, if you look at the price at the biogas plant it's $900 Per liter, uh, per thousand liters, uh, excuse me, uh, per thousand liters. So this means um, my 140,000 liters, which I um, have, um, which I have in my bunker silo right now, will probably give me about 90% uh, of 140,000. Um, 
about 126 thousand dollars of um, profit and this is a nice number I would def definitely want to have in my bank account um, at the end of the day or at the end of next day I assume um, because I mean it's now uh, 524 in the afternoon yes helper I has completed their task no they haven't um, um, so it's now um, um, 5.25 and um, we'll probably take until tomorrow morning noon or something like that until my um, silo is completely fermented and when that's done um, I will uh, yeah sell everything off to the biogas plant that is why I just put the John Deere um, um, collector over there because I will use it later on or uh, tomorrow for collecting the silage from my bunker silo um, so I will take the additional cost for keeping it over one night and I will now go down to the shop and return these two here pieces of equipment here to Gonzales and then I will complete my harvesting contract on field 17 I will do it now my, my I will continue to use myself now and when that's done I will bring you back guys back in and um, yeah I think then we will finish the episode so see you when my harvesting contract is done hello welcome back um, the contract is complete this field is fully harvested I already delivered um, the contract relevant amount of barley to uh, what was it uh, cooperativo urbanos i think um, so i will now collect that reward and i will immediately accept this contract because i need the money um, so 4791 in the bank one in the bank 1492 in my account so got rid of all my debt so that's nice and I still have 11,000 liters here in my truck which I'm about to sell at Valley Grains because Valley Grains gives me 593 per thousand liter um, other than Cooperative Crazil 568 that w was where I delivered the contract amount um, of barley so I have a new contract for bailing, $13,000 um, to do so. I will do this off camera. And then I think we are at the end of this episode. But um, something that um, Gonzalez, the shop owner, told me when I returned the Kruger trailer and the Pöttinger forage harvester was that there's something new on the market which is called precision farming and here my farmer is really considering uh, of doing it to increase its yield and make more money out of it which kind of sounds like a good idea so he will carefully carefully we think about think about this in the next days and hours and um, yeah maybe he will make the decision to um, proceed with precision farming um, in the next episode I mean we still have 6650 nice um, we still have the rented uh, rice fields which we did not do anything with uh, yet so far and these um, need lime and as far as um, Gonzalez, the shop owner, told us, um, precision farming will uh, help us to save um, costs for lime, for fertilizer and so on. But also we need to invest in a little bit more equipment. Um, he also mentioned that um, precision farming um, um, heavily focus also on um, natural fertilizers so uh, slurry and manure something we don't have we should we 
something we need to buy then so this is everything um yeah my farmer here needs to think about and i personally need to think about this as well because um what i've heard is um that when you enter precision farming and the mod maker has not done a soil map for this uh, specific map um it's no big deal i mean um, there will be a standard soil map used um, from giant surfer no big deal but what happens is when the mod maker then decides to do a so soil map and update its map um, to use that soil map i need or y the user of the map in this case me but, but also you um, you need to um, yeah get a new save file and um, start everything from the beginning um, again and I already did this here um, and it takes quite some time and it's a lot of work to do and this is the risk I am taking and this is something what my um, farmer needs consi to consider as well because I mean uh, actually I like the concept of uh, precision farming and I would do it immediately if there was not this risk of losing all my progress um, when the map maker decides to um, yeah go for precision farming with the map but anyways um, that's it for this episode uh, let's play Brazil South Brazilian map um, this was episode 7 uh, leave a like leave a comment um, don't drive your car when you're screwed because if you don't do you will probably see us in the next episode. Bye!